This year, when we first entered the lab, we thought that MDP had changed to a four-man project. Then, we realised that it wasn't a four-man project. In actual fact, we had a student that was serving SHN, another that was on local exchange, one that forgot to register for the module, and one that was late. But nevertheless, our group leader put us together and we learned to work together as a team over these last 12 weeks. To begin this project, we collected the materials required to build our robot from the lab tech. With 25 teams participating in MDP this year, we wanted to make our robot stand out. So what we did was to color the robot up first. Then, we started building the robot by installing the sensors, the motors, and all the different components required to make the robot complete. A robot with purely just aesthetics had no use. We needed to give some purpose to this robot. To ensure that our robot had good sensor readings, we made sure that our sensors are accurate from 0 cm to up to 40 cm. But having good readings isn't enough. We also had to make sure that our robot could go straight, such that it doesn't have to do too much correction and calibration while it's moving. This is an example of one of the toughest challenges that we faced, a staircase. To counter this challenge, we had to make our robot calibrate itself within different depths of blocks. Eventually, we were able to make our robot go for its first fastest path ever, one week before the actual run. However, we are not satisfied with this because the robot missed one block. We found its root cause, which is the low voltage of the battery. So we made it a point to maintain the voltage of the battery to be within 6 volts to 6.3 volt. But what can a robot do without a proper algorithm? So let's find out from my algorithm theme. We had to strategize and devise optimal algorithms to attain a good placing for the leaderboard. We translated our ideas into code, not without many bugs and revision in the process, but we ultimately made it work. For fastest path, we used A star pathfinding. We adjusted for rotation time by penalizing paths that require rotation as compared to the straight path and had two versions of fastest path for different situations, the fastest path leaderboard and the fastest path for phase two of exploration. For exploration, we used right wall hugging for the initial traversal of the maze, and for the remaining unexplored blocks after the initial traversal, we used our fastest path algorithm to explore them. We encountered difficulties such as phantom blocks, but we used a distance map to allow sensor readings of closer distances to override the sensor's readings from far distances. Image recognition, we took advantage of the ability of our robot to take photos of three obstacles at one time, and it only took under specific circumstances. One circumstance would be if the robot is blocked, and another situation would be if there's an obstacle at the last row of the 3x3 grid on the right of the robot, whose photo has not been taken yet. But these were all theoretical, and on a simulator, we needed a way for a user to be able to start an actual run with the robot. So we thought about creating an Android application that acts as a controller for the robot. So we came up with an aesthetic yet user-friendly application. Keeping that in mind, all the interaction with the application must be completely intuitive for the user. Well, after turning our designs into an actual application, we had to make sure that every interaction is error-proof because a wrong mistake could lead to an application crash. Finally, it is time to test how user-friendly the application is. Firstly, the virtual map and all the action buttons are in a single page. It allows users to visualize the map while navigating through the app. There is a total of three tabs that are grouped according to their functionalities. Additionally, to set the robot start point, it only requires one button press. Whereas, with the motion sensor, it is much easier. It allows us to tilt the tablet to move the robot. Last but not least, we needed a device to establish communication between the devices. And that's where we have the Raspberry Pi. The very first thing we had to do was to establish proper communication between the devices. And we had quite a few things to work with, including Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and the USB ports. After initiating the RPI, we carefully designed a multi-processing system to multitask all devices efficiently without compromising performance using Python's multi-processing library. We defined the reading and writing to each subsystem as a process and defined the image recognition hub as a separate process. So let's get to the image recognition part. We used a strong model to offset shots that were out of position or tilted. We used YOLO V4 and the Darknet framework which enables our robot to recognize multiple objects in a single frame. We took pictures in the maze for the training of the image recognition model at different distances, different lighting, and different angles. 
The hard work put into the training of the model paid off as it managed to achieve an accuracy of at least 99.5%, which helped us a lot in our actual. Now that 5 minutes is up, let's talk about some of our strategies that we used. Let's start from fastest path. We realized that every group was going to make their robot travel the fastest. So how do we make our robot go faster? We decided to remove all the sensors because we realized that the sensors and all the unnecessary objects that are weighing down the robot is actually causing the robot to go slower or in fact can actually hit any obstacle. So we entered the fastest path competition with absolutely no sensors with a bare robot that looked completely different from the others. And somehow, a miracle strike. It worked out very well. <laughs>